Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at the sequencer module. This module helps to manage animations for your game and it can allow them to be played with a simple click. It also works to connect these animations in a series which can create some very spectacular effects. We're going to start off today's video looking at the player's view as the GM creates effects for them to see. One of the most basic features of the module is allowing the GM or players with the correct permissions to put down effects onto the scene such as I'm doing right here. A lot of these effects can be put down in a stationary position or they can even be moved across the scene, like so. And it's very easy to shift between them as I can change just with a simple click. I'll be showing off this setup right away as we shift over to the GM view. Before we make that transition though, let's take a look at some of the more complicated setups you can use if you have created a macro or you have found someone that has created a macro for you. In this case, I'll be using macros that were created by Eskimo. I'll be including a link down below to their YouTube channel and their Discord. Please go ahead and check them out and give them some support. These macros connect a number of effects together to create a rather spectacular display, such as with the fire shield macro right here, we can see the cracks in the ground, swirling flames, and the persistent bubble around my character. Now, when I'm all finished, I can go over to the left-hand side, go to the effects viewer, and end all effects. And the macro you just witnessed is completely system agnostic. You can use it in any rule system that you have in place in Foundry. Some of the other ones I've set up though are connected to MIDI QOL and the D&D 5e system, such as Sanctuary. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll target our character first, since it can be cast on other creatures. Cast the spell, and we see the effect goes off. With the player view out of the way, let's go ahead and jump over to the GM view, take a look at the basic features of Sequencer, and then jump into some of the more complicated areas of macros. So here are the modules I recommend adding into your game to make everything work as expected. Just a quick note about the JB2A Patreon collection. You can use the free version. However, if you use the free version, you'll have to go through and edit some of the macros, changing out the file paths, which I will show how to do later on in the video. So as we saw earlier, one of the most basic features of the module is the ability to play effects on the scene. We can access that in the viewer right here. And we're gonna to go to the player and in this case, I want to play a whirlwind effect, which I can just select which one I want. And then I can play on the scene after I've made whatever changes I want here. I just need to switch to layer. And then click in the scene and it'll play. Now, if I wanted to, I could also change the behavior to stretch or move to make it move across the scene like so. There are a number of other changes you can make, such as whether you want it to appear below or above the tokens, the scale of the effect, how fast it's going to move, and whether you want it to preload, which can make it appear a little bit nicer for the players. If you like an effect, you can easily save it right here by giving it a name. And then it can be accessed very easily in your dropdown of presets. For example, I can go to my clock effect that I've already created and play it very easily. In addition to the sequencer player and manager, we also have the sequencer database. This is a very useful tool as it allows for users to preview any animations they may later choose to use, like so. You can also copy the file path which is particularly useful if you want to create your own macros or replace existing animations already in macros. This, for example, is the fire shield macro that we saw earlier. I'm going to go here and copy the file path of this animation and replace a part of my sequencer macro with the animation that we just copied, like so. This is what you would need to do if you are using the free version rather than the Patreon version of the JB2A collection. So let's go ahead and view our updated macro. Make sure you set your macro to script, by the way, and not chat. Okay, and execute. We can see some of the same effects we saw earlier, but we have that new animation that we just copied in. As mentioned earlier, I did not create any of these macros. They were created by Eskimo. Please give them the credit, as well as please support their YouTube channel and visit their Discord. I'll be including a link down below to both. So. 
In their Discord, you can go to Found Your Macros, the pinned messages, jump, and then scroll down from there, and grab whichever macro you want to use. When you grab a macro, make sure you download it and then copy it from there, rather than trying to copy it from Discord. The reason being because sometimes Discord shortens it down and you won't actually have all of the lines of code, and it just won't work. After you download a file, it's simple enough to open it up in Notepad, Control A, Control C, and then back to Foundry. And once you're back in Foundry, just go down to your macro bar, Control V, pasting in, we just copied. You'll probably want to give it a name to identify it. In this case, I'm just going to name it Jump, and change it from Chat to Script. You could, of course, give it a new icon as well. Now, this macro here, it is just the effect, so it is completely system agnostic. We're going to take a look at how we set up the other macros that were connected to D&D 5e spells using the item macro module and MIDI QOL. So we're just going to go to the spell that we want to add the macro to, edit spell, item macro, and we're going to paste it right here and save. And then we're going to go down to details, MIDI QOL fields on use macros. And here we just need to type in item macro. And then we're all finished. Now that we have connected the spell to the macro using item macro, we can go ahead and cast the spell. And at the same time, we're gonna see the macro fires off. And there we have the animation. It is also incredibly easy to add in sound effects into these macros. The second line is where you're going to include the file path to the sound effect you wish to play. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully this has been helpful and has provided some insight in how you can start off with the sequencer module. There's a lot more that this module offers, especially if you're willing to try and make your own macros. But the community members have also created a number of amazing macros, so take a look and see what's available. Thanks everyone, and have a good day.